Well, good evening, everyone. It's lovely to welcome you uh, to our service, our carol service this evening as we gather uh, to worship God and to remember again uh, the Christmas story, to sing and to read and to hear uh, the Christmas uh, story. Uh, the service will uh, proceed unannounced, so just watch for the congregational singings. They're in the bold type in the order of service. We do apologize we ran out of orders of service. So when you see other people standing, if you don't have an order of service, that's your cue to stand as well and to join in the singing. There is supper in the church hall after the service to which you are all invited, and we hope that many of you, as possible, will stay behind to continue our evening uh, together. Well, we gather this evening uh, to worship God and to remember that we celebrate the birth of Jesus, the incarnation of the Son of God. The Scriptures tells us that those who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And Jesus, indeed, is the true light of the world that came into the world, born for us in Bethlehem. We join together in our opening carol, hymn number 328, the Christmas carol, O Come, All You Faithful. Let us pray. O Lord our God, you are the all-powerful and ever-living God. We praise you for your grace and favor to us 
through the incarnation of your Son, born in Bethlehem, born in Mary, born of Mary, the word of the Father which now in flesh appeared to redeem many and to make them your sons and daughters, children of you, the living God. We praise you, our God, for this Christmas season of the year when we can remember afresh and celebrate anew the gift of your Son born for our salvation. We praise you, our God, because you caused the night of your Son's birth to shine with the brightness of true light. And we pray that we who know the mystery of that light on earth may enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you in the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, three persons in glory everlasting. We confess, Father, that too often we prefer the darkness to the light. We confess, Father, we do not always follow the light of your word. We seek light in the things of this world and this age, rather than in him who is the true light which came into the world. Have mercy and forgive us our sin, we pray, and grant us your grace that we might receive him who is the true light of the world and walk in his ways. Our God and Father, we thank you that we can come together this evening to worship you, to sing your praise, to hear afresh the Christmas story. And by your Spirit, O God, help us to rightly remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the songs of the angels the gladness of the shepherds, the joy of Simeon and Anna, and the worship of the Magi. We pray that this Christmas season will make us glad to be your children and to bring to mind grateful thoughts and words of praise for all you have done for us through your Son. Grant us your grace, O God, and your blessing in our, in our time of worship together. And may we be attentive to all that you wish to say to us through your word in the songs and by your Spirit. Hear our prayer, O God, for we ask these things in the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and for his glory. Amen.
Genesis 22, verses 15 to 18. The angel, <coughs> the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear, by, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed. Will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land deep of darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen.
In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with a child and will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, 
who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a baby. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Amen. Luke 2, verse 8 to 16. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news 
of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been warned to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. The Visit of the Magi. <clears throat> After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly 
and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star had been seen in the east, went ahead of them, and it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Amen.
John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. I want to uh, thank everyone who took part in our service this evening, our readers, our choirs, our organist Hillary, not forgetting those who greeted you at the door on the way in, and those who decorated the church for our Christmas services, and those who afterwards will serve us uh, supper. If you haven't been to Downshire Road before, I know probably many of you have, uh, then to get to the church hall, go out this way around this side, 
and up through the wayside door uh, into the church hall uh, for uh, supper. Can I remind the boys and girls and also extend the invitation to the boys and girls from Rhines and any friends that any of the boys and girls here might have this evening to a Christmas party on Friday at half past two from half two to five o'clock in our church hall. So that's for all the boys and girls in Sunday School on Downshire Road in Rhines and their friends and any visiting children here this evening who don't fall into any of those categories. And also just to remind, uh, particularly members of Downshire and Ryan's, but anybody who wishes to join us next Sunday morning in Ryan's at half past ten for our United Christmas Day service. And boys and girls, don't forget to bring your toys with you. Now in closing, I want to share just three uh, thoughts from God's Word this evening to help us think more deeply and more clearly about the incarnation of God's Son, given the name Jesus. And my thoughts this evening are lifted from our last reading from John's Gospel, chapter 1, particularly verses 11 and 12. And in good Presbyterian fashion, uh, the three thoughts begin with the same letter, the letter R. So hopefully you'll be able to remember them. Three words all beginning with the letter R. The first word is reject. It is reject. We read of Jesus in John 1 and 11. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. We might say that they rejected him. But who is John talking about in this verse, and what does it mean for us today? Well, in the first instance, John is talking about Jews. He is talking about Jesus' contemporaries who rejected Jesus. The leaders of the Jews turned on Jesus, turned the people on Jesus and convinced the Roman authorities, that Jesus should be sentenced to death. The Bible teaches us that salvation is of the Jews, but Jesus, the perfect Israel, the perfect Jew, was rejected even by his own people. But even more than that, Jesus came to a world of darkness and sin, and he has been rejected by countless millions of people down the ages and across cultures. In a, poor, in a poor farming family in the days of the Depression in the USA, there was one son. His parents wanted the very best for him, so they scrimped and they saved to send him to college. After he had been away for a year or so, they scrimped and they saved again. They sold some stuff so they could go visit their son. The parents arrived on campus, poorly dressed in their farm clothes, and seeing their son, they ran to meet him, to embrace him, and to greet him. But the son looked at his father without showing any signs of recognition. And perhaps embarrassed by his parents' poverty, turned to some students and said, I don't know who this is. He must be crazy. How absurd to reject one's parents. How much more absurd is the truth that Jesus was rejected by his own, the promised Messiah rejected by his own. But even more so, how, much, how absurd it is to reject the one who flung the stars into space, by whose word he spoke into existence the world, and who came to give his life as a ransom for many. And after 2,000 years of the Holy Spirit's witness to him in history, through the preaching of the gospel and the lives of godly people, he is still rejected by many this day. You might reject a present on Christmas morning because it is not to your liking, and that would be an insult to the giver, wouldn't it? But if you reject Jesus Christ, the light of the world, the Messiah, the Savior of sinners, you insult God, before whom you must one day give an account for what you did with his Son. The first word is reject. The second word is receive. Not everyone rejected Jesus. We think of Matthew the tax collector who rose from his tax collecting way of life to follow Jesus. Or the fishermen who left their nets to follow Jesus. Some, yes, did respond positively to Jesus and have done across the ages and across cultures. But what does it mean to receive Jesus? Well, to receive Jesus is not merely to believe that he existed. 
Even Richard Dawkins, a great atheist, I think, believes that Jesus existed. It is not merely to believe that he lived in Judea and Galilee for a time, or merely to believe that he healed the sick and gave sight to the blind and taught many things. To receive Jesus is certainly to believe that he existed and did all those things. But to receive Jesus also involves believing in his name, as the Scripture teaches us. To receive Jesus is to receive him personally as Savior, as the way, the truth, and the life, as the resurrection and the life, as the only way we can be saved from sin and brought into the right and eternal relationship with God. To receive Jesus is to receive him as he is revealed to us in the Scriptures. We dare make up our own image of Jesus or try to fit him into the world's way of doing things. To receive Jesus is to receive him as we find him in the Bible, the Son of God who loved us and gave his life for us, the Son of man in whom all authority rests, the Son of David, the true and eternal King, before whom all must bow and confess as Lord to the glory of the Father. We look forward to receiving gifts this Christmas. Let us be sure we have received Jesus as he is offered to us through the Scriptures. Reject, receive. Thirdly and finally, the word write. Write, R-I-G-H-T, not W-R-I-T-E. R-I-G-H-T, and not right as opposed to wrong, but right in the sense that we live in a world in which people demand their rights. The right to this, the right to that, the right to the other. You get fed up hearing about it sometimes. But understanding the word in this sense, the only right which ultimately matters is whether we've been given the right to be children of God, sons and daughters of the living God. You know, all of us are born in the image of God, but that does not give us the right to become a child of God. John tells us that we are born of natural descent, human decision, or a husband's will, but that does not give us the right to become a child of God. We have no right to be a child of God. We have no claim on God to be his child, his son and our daughter. And why should we? When we have rejected him, when we've turned away from him, when we are sinners and under his judgment. Why should we when, until we receive Jesus, we are still rejecting Jesus? According to God's word that was spoken this evening, it is only Jesus who gives us the right to be a child of God, a daughter of the living God, or a son of the living God. How does Jesus grant us that right? To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to be children of God, born of God. Friends, have you received Jesus Christ personally? He is the greatest gift ever given. No gift will ever surpass the gift of God's Son born for our salvation. Have you believed in his name, believed everything about him that the Bible teaches us? We cannot dismiss certain things because they're uncomfortable for us in this age. Friends, it is only in receiving Jesus Christ, believing in his name, that we are given the right to be a child of God. A status that is granted to us through Jesus, a status that is an eternal blessing. Be sure this Christmas you have received Jesus Christ, believed in his name, and know the assurance of being a son or daughter, a true child of the living and eternal God. Jesus said, now this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we bless you for your grace to us this evening. We bless you, Father God, that we've been able to come together to sing and to hear the Christmas story and to think on your truth for our lives tonight. We thank you, Father God, that you gave the gift of your Son, that we might receive him and believe in his name, that in order to become a true child of you, a son or daughter of you, the living God. Dear God in heaven, may we not be found wanting on that great day when Jesus will return 
to be the judge of the living and the dead. May we not be found wanting as those who have rejected Jesus in this life, who did not receive him personally as Savior, King, and Lord. But Father God, may we know that joy at this Christmas season and in every day of the year of receiving Jesus, believing in his name, and knowing that we are a son or daughter of you, the living God. Hear our prayer, Father, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing carol uh, this evening is hymn number 321. Hymn number 321, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs> behalf of us in the mounts, can I wish every one of you the joy and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ this Christmas season and his blessings, God willing, into 2023. Let us pray. Our God and Father, we bless you for your grace and mercy to us this day. We thank you, Father, for the joy of being able to sing those lovely words, the joy of being able to sing about the Lord Jesus. And we thank you for the fellowship that we share in him. And we pray, Father God, that as we uh, conclude our service and as we go and share in supper together, we will continue to know your presence with us. We thank you for all the good things you provide for us. We thank you for those who will serve us. Continue to bless our time together. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this night until Christ calls or comes, and then forevermore. Amen.